Oh, gosh, have I got a story? Oh, gosh, a story for you this morning. Now, now, how old is, is, is too old to date? You know, this should be a dilemma, actually. You know, what, yeah. what's too old? What, 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 what constitutes a, a massive age gap in relationships? You know, because sometimes we see that. We see older men with mm. young girls. You know, they're in their 60s and they've got some 21-year-olds. But what happens when it's the other way around? When you get older people that date younger men. Well, we've got a you grand... Mean older women that date Older younger women men. that yes. date younger men, sorry. So we have a grand. She's 62 mm -hmm. and she wants eighth baby. She wants her eighth baby At with 62. her toy boy who is 26. Now, it wouldn't be so controversial if you saw kind of like the age gap. And, I, and I've got a picture of the age gap and, and this lady and her, and her toy boy. And I don't know if I've, us black women have ever done this, right? Because I know I did this just the other day. I, I was in the shopping centre. I'm going to come to the story in a minute. And I saw this beautiful looking black man. Lovely. Because, you know, good looking people take your eye. Took my eye and then it moved over to his woman. And she was a white lady. But they didn't match. That's all I can say. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, break her down but the way that she looked and the way that he looked I, I couldn't get it I, I couldn't get it that just two different body types two different clothing types it even looked like two different personality types because they walked into this shoe shop and the way that she spoke and the way that he spoke but they obviously have something in common absolutely something in common but he was this buff bloke and she just looked like she had 10,000 babies and just let herself go and that was it and I just thought wow Wow, what a waste. But coming back to this story, which is what I'm saying about partnerships, everyone is entitled to love who they want to, which is the moral of the story here. We look at aesthetics and think, oh, that person's not supposed to be suited with that person. But do these two suit? Do these two suit? Now, oh, those, this those grand... Two are, they're always on TikTok, those two. I, yeah. I, I follow them on TikTok. Yeah, she's 62 and he is 26 years old and she wants another baby. She wants her eighth child. Now, how that's going to happen, I don't know. Because if my ovaries have gone or, or eggs gone at whatever point, hers have definitely gone. So I don't know what's going on. Where is she going to get them from? They're not going to magic up and suddenly come back in. So I have no idea. I have no idea. But do you think that is too old? Or should you think that people should be allowed to be and date who they want to? Love is love, well, right? I think people can date who they want. Um, I, I watch this couple on TikTok quite a lot and when you watch them as a couple and take away black, white, age and everything, I actually don't think it's about money. There is a, I do feel that he has a genuine love for this woman. He really likes this woman. When you watch the two of them and their personalities, even though looking at them, they, they don't match and they don't match but they obviously have some kind of connection with each other. Now, about her having a baby, well, <laughs> 62, well, <laughs> I, I, I will comment on... <laughs> I don't on even think she'll have the energy to push 62. it out. <laughs> I, I, I don't say about looking at 62, but they do have a connection. If you do follow them um, um, and you watch them together, they, there's a lot of... She gets a lot of hate from people she's absolutely lot and i do believe a lot of it as well is jealousy you know um whatever it is she's got and whatever it he's got there's some kind of connection they've been together a few years now they have they've been together a long time uh yeah, they've more been than together. Ten... yeah go on M more than 10 years I, I believe yeah more than 10 years they've been together so you know good, good. And, and he sh and he shows her off he actually shows he takes everywhere. He doesn't. He doesn't care what people think. You know, like some men like older women. Yeah. Like some men are really into older women and are, are very attracted. And I, I think that's it. Everybody mm. should be entitled to love who they want. I am not going to. I'm not going to argue against that because, as I said, I've seen some couples and I think, how did that match? I don't understand. Like on Saturday, but I've got to just have the knowledge within myself that everyone's allowed to love somebody else. And who are we to have to pick and choose because of yeah. aesthetics, right? We shouldn't. Now we have Rudy Liquid in the green room. We see him. He's already. He's on time today. You know, you know, Rudy's gonna have Ru something to Rudy say. Rudy turned that, up isn't today. <laughs> <laughs> in wake up. In, in, he is. In wake, in wake up. In wake up. Are you sure he wake up? He's woken up. Are you ready Let to come see. on, Mr. Liquid? 
Two minutes, two, two minutes. minutes. All right. So let's talk about another story, actually. So we, we, we're going from one extreme to another. And uh, hold on one second. Let's just talk about the chat because I'm missing out the whole of the chat here. Yeah, there's a lot going on in the chat. There, there. is. There is. There's a uh, lot. Delight says that Cher um, is 70 odd and her man's in his 30s. Okay, and mm. Jackie says some men do in mixed relationships. And uh, did I say morning, Kimmy? How are you, my darling? Um, Stephen Henry says she have money. <laughs> she have money. <laughs> Delight says she looks revved out. She looks she, like she's gone round the corner a few times, isn't it? <laughs> you know what? I I, I really don't. Um, I'm, I'm I'm with Jackie. Jackie says sorry, but she looks like she's ready for the grave. She actually looks like. You know, like when certain people just die and they're just in the coffin. That's how she actually looks it. I didn't really want to say it, but yeah. But you know what? Um, she might be a nice person, you know? I'm she, sure she's know, got she a great personality. A, a great personality. And, you know, we're looking at the aesthetic. We're looking at the outside. We're looking at the outside genetics, ain't we? we maybe are. they do get on and maybe, you know, she, I mean, looking at her, she is young at heart. It's yeah. just the way she looks. And people can't help the way they look, isn't it? Some people yeah. are blessed with young looks and some people are not blessed with young with looks. young looks, you yeah. know? I mean, let's ask the question. Let's switch that around. What if it was a man of that age and a woman, a beautiful black woman? What would people be saying? Well, because that, that's... I've seen many a times of older men, you know, of age with a younger, good-looking black woman. I've seen that on many occasions and we tend to look that, that over quite a lot we might say oh yeah he's got money but we don't discuss it as much do we no but I, I do see when i was working in in the city i did see a lot of black women dating white men mm. and not all of them were exceptionally look good looking but they had money and you kind of realize why they were there but but yeah yeah it's it's yeah. it's not uh, discussed as much as yeah go on it's not discussed as 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 much anymore because I think it's it's a given now. It's it's accepted that people are in mixed relationships. Yeah, you know when you start seeing Indians start to spread out into black relationships and white relationships, you know the world is evolving because Indians were the, one of the tightest communities where they don't like to break into any other uh, uh, community other than their own. So when you start seeing them start spreading out far and wide, evolution evolution is here of yeah. relationships definitely. Steven Stephen Henry says, soon see them on Jer Jeremy Carl. <laughs> Most 62-year-olds uh, still look good, says Jackie. AJ, nothing but a number, but I feel a tune coming on with lovely, lovely Lee. Um, Lady B says, gold digger. Kim says, I'm 67 this year, but still feel young at heart. And yes, Kim, we know that. Do I know Kim is definitely We need to get you a 22-year-old, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need think, to get you a 22 year old definitely wear, wear that 22 year old that yeah <laughs> um steven says yeah pat him on the back go on me brother yeah delight says i can't date a man for money just true and uh, it, it, it. look, yeah, look delight i'm sorry just put some blindfolds on right <laughs> don't worry about that put some blindfolds on make sure it's dark every night i could do it man i could do it yeah i could do it anna nicole did like lovely lee says anna nicole smith married an 89 year old billionaire yeah, man was in a nicole. wheelchair he was in a she wheelchair was a digger, she, she was he a had he had one of those you know those pipe things to his nose to breathe properly i mean what could he do she probably just tickled him and Listen, that was that it was that was about enough money that was about money that that to me that was about money. That wasn't about love. I, I couldn't see any love. And maybe I might be wrong, but I feel that was about money. Going back on to uh, mixed relationships, I just want to just touch on that um, a little bit. Okay. Um, with mixed relationship in this country, okay, we have so much um, different um, racial communities. Okay. And um, as the youngsters are growing up, I do believe as youngsters are in school, a lot of youngsters are not seeing colour anymore. They're just seeing no. people. So you're getting a lot of different cultures mixing with each other, wanting to be with each other. And I actually do not think it's because a person is white or black. You know, if you grow up with somebody who's white or if you put a bunch of kids together and they grew up together and never knew anything about colour, I do believe that there would be equality amongst them. The, the discrimination comes amongst the elder generation. So as you were saying with the Asian communities now, a lot of the young Asians are fighting the older generation saying, look, you know, 
this is my friend and they actually see black white chinese whatever it as their friend genuinely and they don't see that culture difference you know they Correct. know there's a culture difference but the culture now is mixed is a mixed culture so you're going to get it so people just need to it's get a gender it free culture as well accept it <laughs> yeah oh gosh that i, I well <laughs> well the gender thing is the next thing you know that's um that's the next thing but anyway I Towards the end of the show, I got a great video on a black lady on, a, on uh, I think it's called CBN News or whatever it is. And they asked her a question and she made a statement because people seem to be confused about what is a female. But we'll go into it another time. I think we've got our guests ready now. Mr. Yep. Rudy Liquid, are you ready for Before us? Before we have the guests, let's boss a tune. Let's boss a tune. So our guest today, uh, Rudy Liquid. Everyone welcome Rudy Liquid. Put our L in the chat. Pick up yourself, pick up yourself, good yourself. Rudy, how are you doing, sir? Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, I have got up, actually. Got up. <laughs> you got up. Morning to you. About time. Yeah, the thing you is... You had, so had a, a bag of I've people sleep, waiting for been, you last I've week. Been for, I've been sleeping for an entire week, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, by the looks of it. <laughs> oh, man, I was, I was trying to get to, I was trying to get, get to Bedford, man. Trains don't run in Bedford, you know, I don't know. When you when you look at the timetable on Bedford, you go, when's the next train? And it will go Thursday. And you think, oh, my God, forget that. Okay, okay. okay. It's not that bad. It's, it's bad, not that man. bad. I used to live in Croydon. There was trains that used to run to Bedford. There was the Bedford trains. I know that they run to Bedford. Are you Direct sure? train. You sure? Positive. Sure? Absolutely I don't know positive. I don't know Bedford? what century it is in Bedford. I don't know what century. I think it's about 1948. <laughs> I, think, I think that's the time in Bedford. 1948, something like that. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Oh, well done. Well done. Well done. Good morning, well done. Good morning to you. I, 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 I was listening to some of that stuff, man. The, the woman with the scrotum face, man. I mean, God, what's going on? I just don't get it. it. I just don't get it. The scrotum you face, you know. Please, sir, sir, <laughs> excuse me. Everybody has their, 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 their view. And um, that's 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 exactly what I saw. I saw that, um, like you said, 10 years Absolutely. is a long time. It's, it's a very long time and, and something something's happening there, you know. She's got something yeah. going on good. That's all yeah, I can say. It's not her face. Is, is maturing. The insurance <laughs> the policy is maturing. The pension. And... She's got a good pension going on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you start thinking about these things, you know. When you meet, meet someone older, do you have a good pension? You know what I mean? Am I going to be all right when you're gone? <laughs> and there's an echo going on there. Sorry, Sharky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know no, what it is? I think it's me, right? Um, I honestly do believe... One second. Oh, no, it's not you. Gone. No, it's not you. It's not you, um, Rudy. But don't worry, because I've got a story to talk about while he's gone anyway. Because <laughs> okay, go I was it. supposed to speak about this before you uh, played that track. But coming back on the theme, because you know I always do things about people and what they've done to themselves. Now, yeah. we know that people like to get cosmetic surgery or they like to enhance their looks, as we say. I get really scared about doing certain things because things never go right. However, there's something called laminating your brows right where you get your brows straightened so it looks like they sit smoother on your face you know sometimes you get those unruly brows and you might yeah. pluck one or two there well this lady went and got her brows laminated but unfortunately there was a little bit of a problem after it happened now for those ever thinking about getting your brows laminated right let this woman right tell you that you shouldn't get it because this is what happens because they're now all straight and they don't sit flat so apparently she looks like some sort of grinch so be careful out there ladies do not go get your brows laminated don't do it don't do it don't do it leave your brows alone i've got very thin fine brows i ain't, i'm not doing that imagine do if you, you woke um, up do you do that thing with a string or whatever it is threaded threaded <laughs> I watch them do it, you know, and I say to myself, yeah. how, what they do, you know, and I say, one day I'm going to try, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get, I'm going to pin down HBK and get her through and go, you know. Is it? And just fuck about. Do it, I, I no, no, but do it slowly. Do it. Don't do it fast. Just do it slowly. You know, when she oh, the annoys, slow ones are wicked because you just get one hair slowly. at a time and pull it. <laughs> but you Darkie, know what? The... You're, you're, you're being, yeah, that, that, that sounds painful. When you do it slow, <laughs> it's painful, isn't it? Slow it is pain. very painful. If you haven't had your eyebrows threaded in a while and you've got lots of regrowth and to get it done and they rip about five or six of them, no, oh. it, it's quite painful. But you know what? I actually wonder if it's quite hygienic because you know the way they do it. They actually put the string in their mouth 
Okay. And then they pull it to and fro through their hands. And as they're pulling it, that bit that's in their mouth moves along. So some of their saliva is actually going yeah. back up. So if, the if they pause. pull out an eyebrow, yeah. Yeah, and it goes into and the pause. If they've got some kind of Fergie or Fungi going on, it goes into your pause. And, you know, you might see someone with a swollen <laughs> eyebrow. You know, like that kind of lip when they've had that, that injection and it swell up the lip and you just see one eyebrow just swell up. Oh, no. That's yeah. all. But, you know, I understand why people w would want to sort of at least tidy up their eyebrows and stuff like that, especially when you start getting grey hairs, because for some reason, grey hairs stick out. They don't. <laughs> I can. I it's like I'm to, here, isn't it? Yeah, it's, have you ever tried to, to grease down a grey hair? And you try to grease it down. You try to grease, and the thing just keep popping up, popping up. And when they pop up, they, they, they pop up the next morning and they're like two inches longer than all the other hairs that you've got around. Horrible. Oh, I, don't, I don't know about that. I don't have a lot of grey hairs, Rudy. You know what I mean? As you can see, you know, mine, mine's black. It might be thinning, but okay. I still got my black hair. You know what I mean? You've got your hat on, so you're hiding something under there, you know? No, it's or not no that I'm hair. hiding, you know? It's just that the... Um, I've never been a fan of the shape of my head. I'm not like Sharpie. I'm not that brave, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Sharpie's got a nice shaved brown. Up, you know? Is it? Sorry? I said my head's not shaved up and I have short hair. Yeah, but the thing is, it looks like your, your, your forehead is kissing your neck back. It's like, <laughs> oh, God. I'm like, I don't, I don't have... <laughs> don't make me do these big belly laughs at this time of the morning, please. <laughs> no, me and Sharky, like, we're the same. Look, see, it's like the forehead is, wants to kiss no, your my, neck back. No, I'm sorry, like... my, my, my head not look like that. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I, I think... I think from an objective point of view, Sharky, you know, you're going to love yourself, man. And you're supposed oh, to Oh, yeah. Yourself. You have to love yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you like that 62-year-old yeah. loves herself as well. And her husband you loves her. Yourself. So, you know, and we have to love her too. Of course. And your, tr and your true friends will tell you the truth. You understand? Yeah, yeah. And your, really. your friend friend, who I look good, won't tell you nothing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No. They will make you go out looking Just bad. Skim off the side. Out, yeah, make you look out going skinny, make you look out going smelly or whatever. But your friend will tell you straight. And <laughs> and Sharky, I'm a friend. You understand? You're fire your kissing neck back. I'm your friend. I'm your friend. I am your friend. I am your friend. It's all right, I'll get you back in Just say I'll get you back in Iron Napper, mate. Oh my god, I'm looking forward to that again. It's all right, I'm don't so... worry. So I'll make sure so you tell us about um <laughs> Yeah, Tell, well, we're here to talk about you, Rudy Liquid, and, and what you're up to. And since you okay. mentioned Ayanapa, you was in yeah. Ayanapa last year, was that? The, tell us about Ayanapa and... Uh, oh, sorry, Ibiza. Was, Ibiza, Ibiza last, last year. year. It's Ayanapa Ibiza this year. year was, it was, yeah. It, it, it's um, it's Carry On Comedy, put together by uh, Michael P. and Lyndon. Uh, Lyndon Lumsden. Um, because they're, they're, they're two guys who have been in love with um, comedy for the past, maybe... Not maybe... They've been in love with comedy for over 20 years. Um, they were they were one of the, the earliest um, facilitators of comedy is the, is, is the best way to put it. When it when it first broke just after the 291 and the real McCoy took off. Oh, I remember um, 291, yeah. Oh, you get, oh so do I. Yeah, that was brilliant. <laughs> I love 291. I love 291 so Club. Do I, I so do I, so do I. Um, and... Um, so, so they used to they 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 used to put on shows um, from from way back in the day, and um, you know they've been putting jo on shows at the Alexandra Palace. They've been putting shows on at uh, Catford and in um, Hackney Empire, um, and so they decided that you know it was time to take the comedy abroad because as children, as I recall, us got used to go on excursions to places yeah. like Little Hampton. Bognor right, Regis. one in Wales? Barry, Barry, Barry Island we used to go. Yeah, Barry, Barry Island. Island. Bognor Regis was the one. And Margate. Great Yarmouth. And Margate was another big one. Yeah, Margate. Great, Great Yarmouth. Great Yarmouth. Those were, I mean, those were the days, man. You know, They were fun we, days, we'd weren't they? We'd all jump on a coach. We'd all jump on a coach. Do you get me? You'd, you'd rush to go and sit in the back. Kind of like thing. Yeah. There'd be people who were carrying. Remember those big speaker, the big, the big speakers, the heavy yeah, the, the, things the, the, that they used the, to carry the, on yeah. their shoulder. They used to call them the wog boxes. Someone's parent was drunk. <laughs> yeah, man. But and and black people are something else, you know, because we never used to take sandwiches. Yeah. People would turn up with a Dutch pot. <laughs> yeah. Right we did. You're so right. The Dutch, yeah. the whole pot, the they whole. They would turn pot. up with the whole Dutch pot of food. Yes. <laughs> so you, you, you get right, you get me rice and peas. You get in your chicken. You get in your patty. You get in your coleslaw. 
You know what I mean? But those and, were the good old days, right? Because all the parents, they, it was much more of a community back then than it is now. Now, when you go on these coach trips, everyone's got their own little food and nice little packages. Yes. Back then, when they were going yeah. on a coach trip, everyone was talking to everybody else, bearing in mind there was no mobile phones and people would turn up at the right times and everyone's got some pot of something. You could mm-hmm. go around the whole coach and you're getting fed. Mm-hmm. Everybody yeah, getting fed, fed each everyone other. Speeded, no, That's how I grew up. Yeah. yeah, I grew up on a whole road where the whole road knew each other. And we used to all go out to play. We lived in a cul-de-sac, Homewood Road, just off Whitehorse Lane. And the whole road knew each other. And all the parents okay. did as well. And the parents all used to cook for each other. A bit like what I said, the whole street cooked for each other back yeah. in Walthamstow, the story yeah. I ran a couple of weeks ago. That's what okay. happened in our street. That's how I grew up in a real family black cultured environment and of course on the other side you heard which wife was getting beat up which children were getting beat down <laughs> someone was running to someone's house street. in the middle of the night Horrible yeah it, it really was it really was if if uh, reality tv was around then we'd have been big stars we'd have it's been big true, stars but I, sure. think, I think i think what what basically happened there was integration not not integration um immigration happened and yeah. um a load of different cultures and races started to move in into into any given area um and then people didn't like you said they didn't we, we stopped communicating the same way like i've got i've got i've got neighbors to my right and neighbors to my left yeah the neighbors to my right i know them they're an irish they're an irish family who's been here for over like 18 19 years and then to my to the left of me i've got a hmo yeah okay yeah, you understand what I'm saying? So with the HMO... That's a house of multiple occupancy, if people don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know that. It's a Did house you know of multiple occupancy. No, I that's, didn't know. That's, that's, that's because um, HPQ is an entrepreneur. That's why. <laughs> no, no. That's because I've rented before, and it, it, there's a difference between when you've got a single house and you're rented, or if it's a house of multiple op- occupations. So, yeah. That's why I say that you're an entrepreneur, Me never, me never, me never, <laughs> never We have, have to give you your jewels. We have to give you your jewels. Give you your credit. <laughs> you understand? I have to do that. And um, so, 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 so that communication didn't really happen. I mean, there, I don't feel that there's much of a community in London anymore. Um, I, I see community when I step outside the M25 and I go up north. Um, I, see, I, see, I see that more so, to be honest with you. Um, and that's not just uh, in terms of talking about black or white, but in just culturally, it's, it's totally different. Like I, I can go into a pub um, in Newcastle, and I will see uncle, aunt, I will see dad, mum, do you get me? I will see, they, and they know each other like that, but, but that's years of culture. Mm. Whereas once you break the M25, everything speeds up. Have you noticed that? When you're driving on the motorway, everything is all good. And the moment you hit the M25, people are trying to pass you, you get me? There's this rush, 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 rush. Thing Rudy, going on. I, I can, I can attest to that because I've recently moved from London up to Wolverhampton. If people don't know, I've said it all the time, mm-hmm. and the two contrasting lives are completely different. Yeah. The things that happen in London and the things that happen further up in the country is, is two different ways of life. And what yeah. I found is when I go shopping, I have to be prepared to add another half hour or so on my time because everyone wants to talk to you. You, you can't yes. go and you're at the till. Oh, how are you? What's your day like? And then you get into a whole conversation the shopkeeper up the shop everywhere everyone's lovely and it's it's a slower pace but it's not a slow pace it's yeah. a doable that. pace it it's, is, it's it a is, doable is, pace yeah. nobody's got road rage i, I very no. rarely have to shout at someone or do anything in london it's all the time you're bibbing your horn you are at a state of just um stress in london all the time. total it, stress I, I, all the time everywhere where you go and here i feel like when i go into london now i'm like i need to get back home i can't take all this madness okay it's, i can i can I, I can understand that because we don't yeah. we don't even real, we don't realize just how stressed we are in london you know i mean i mean nowadays you can't even you can't you you you, you can't park anywhere you get me you, you, you're frightened if you go into a box that you didn't realize was a box because <laughs> that box oh, been that costing you, you get me bro it's, it's like a box yeah. end up costing you what 70 80 pound if you forget it doubles in price in terms of um, parking penalties do you know what I mean? And then when you do go and park your car, I get I get more pissed off when I have to park my car because I know that parking meter is earning more money per hour than I do. How can I <laughs> earn more money than, than the average person? But there are parking meters that do. 
Listen, the thing about can... it is now they they don't even have parking meters now. It's all about Ringo, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yes. But we Apple love, but we, and... we like Ringo though. Yeah, Ringo but... was needed because I didn't yeah. like when I used to put a pound in the machine and it cost seventy p, but... and I didn't get my thirty pence back. <laughs> But, but you know what? They're smart because when you support the seventy p in, or you put a pound or two pound in, you can see the money going. You think, oh, geez, am I putting all this money into a machine? But like now, it's out your bank. You don't even realize it. You, think, you don't even realize it. Quid, you know, it's and true. and and Rudy's right. The the machine or or the the park to park your car for an hour, they make more money an hour than you would do that, definitely. Well, listen, yeah. come to Wolverhampton, man. It's free parking everywhere. You don't have to pay for park nowhere. And you can for park now. on a yellow line. Seriously, I, I kid you for not. Now. Come yeah, to right, Wolverhampton. You know, right. I haven't had one parking ticket since I've been at Not one. Not one. So, you know, not like one. It. Yeah, but the thing is, to drive to you lot, though, when you drive to you lot down, is it the M1 or is it M6? It's the M6, isn't it? M6. It's the M6, man. I get epileptic fits when I'm driving down there. <laughs> You get me? I'm like, hold on a minute. I only did 51. Click, click, clink, 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 clink. The lights are going off. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to be so... You have to add, add her to the speed. When you're going to Wolverhampton, you have to add her to the speed. <laughs> you're just going to lick off all of those lights, man. All of those lights. <laughs> I think the only, the only stress I really have, like, when it, I'm, I'm, I mean, yeah, I mean, the gas bill and electricity bill and blah, blah, Oh, blah, let's blah. not talk about that, please. But, Please, okay, but the only well, but the only thing, is, the only issues I really have nowadays is like it's park, it's the car, it's the parking, it's the it's the it's those it's those little fines. That, those are the only things that when I see a brown letter come through the letterbox, it's normally you parked in the wrong place, you went into a bus stop lane, you went in, and this is like at least once a month that will happen, you know, for me for some reason. I just ah, that's frustrating. And that's why we are the way we are in London. Because like you said, darling, you don't have to worry about them things there when it comes to parking. You don't have to worry about it. I'm telling you. Well, I try not to drive too much because I don't drive in London. Even when I lived there, I, I never drove in London because it's too difficult. It's too difficult to park. It's too expensive to park. And you mm. might park your car and don't even know if you're going to come back and find it there. So, you know, we've got a transportation system. That's nice. We need to take, it. Like, we need to take like advantage Manchester, of it. Though, you drive up to Manchester hey, guys. to see the car. Sorry, Sharky. Finish yeah, you drive, you drive up to Manchester. I remember the first time I drove up to Manchester because you talked. You, you just mentioned you, you you go up there and you don't know if you're going to find your car or whatever because someone's going to steal it or whatever. But that's what I found when I went up north. That's the one thing I have to say about north. The teeth, the teeth, I can't move. I went up to Manchester, yeah, and I remember I, went, I drove up there and next thing I knew, my car was gone. And I said, "All right, I've learnt my lesson. I've learnt my lesson." So the Lock last the car. time I went. Yeah, the next time I went up to Manchester, I went up on a train and I, and I came back in a car. I said, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you went up on a train and you came, you got revenge and come back in somebody else's car. That's right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, I'm going to play one track before we just head into the ad breaks and we'll carry on. Yes, and we are back. back. We are back. We're Ooh. back with the lovely Rudy Liquid. Thanks for joining in with the I chat with I us today. I don't know about lovely. <laughs> <laughs> You're on mute, Sorry. Rudy. Look, I'm in You're blue. on mute. Oh. He's, he's all right. We, we got you. We got you. We got you. Oh, no, we, we got, got you. you. Yeah, we got okay. you. We got you. Right, we can I hear you. Out? No, no, yeah. I, 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 I muted you. It's all right. I muted yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew it was yeah. personal. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that you're blending in with the back as well. You've got the red up, you know? Well, looks the thing good. is, you know, I, do, I do my research, you know? I do my research. I do my research. I love your show. I love your show. I think it's very bright. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's, it, 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 you get people involved. And I like that. I think it's really good. I think it's really good. There's something that's needed at the end of the day, because um, the one thing that I found um, when it comes to the black British communities, we, we, we don't seem to have an outlet or enough of an outlet when it comes to our own opinions, our own points of view, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And, that, and that's your, your, your platform, your radio station actually provides that um, and gives people a chance to air their views. I mean, when we were going through the pandemic, as it was a classic example of people trying yeah. to air their views, um, and we weren't allowed to be heard, not from, from a cultural perspective, more so than um, anything else. Um, so, so, so it's good that we, we finally start to have our own platforms. I think it's, it's reaching that stage where, uh, because we've got the internet now, that we no longer 
have to say, oh, BBC, let us in, ITV, let us in, please, 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 please. Um, we're part of we're part of the culture. We're part of the community. We want to we want to be seen. We want to be heard, you know. And when we are heard, or when we are seen, it's always after the watershed. It's always late at yeah. night, you know. What I mean, um, we've got to stay up um, just to catch our own programs, just to see bits and pieces about ourselves. But it has all changed. I must admit. Uh, unfortunately, it was it was due to George Floyd, believe it or not. Um, yeah. The fact it's a game that he, changer. Yeah, because people actually saw what we were talking about as kids growing up in this country that we're being treated a certain way and it's basically it was down to what we what is no the term is institutionalized racism which is um getting people to behave a certain way through the media's um indoctrination and interpretation of what black british people are like and the funny thing is, there's uh, there's some news coming out about Matt Hancock at the moment. Uh, it's called mm. the WhatsApp files, where there was lots of WhatsApp messages that have been revealed now, where he was saying that they need another COVID type scaremonger to keep people That's at right. home because I think people That's weren't right. abiding by the rules. So he was sending out a text to some of the fellow MPs saying, you know, why don't we scaremonger them again? And that way they will stay at home. And we don't know how much of this COVID was scaremongering and what was actually real. But that's another conversation for another yeah, time. We've it, done it, the, it, the COVID it, conspiracy it, theories to, to, to death. We've done it yeah. to death. I, I, I can understand that. But I think we do have to understand the impact that that has had um, and the way in which now people or critical thinkers or people with different points of view um, are, are seen now because it, it was a case of you, you can't say anything. You can't question nothing. Do you know what I mean? You see a guy dressed up with a beard, wearing a dress, and you're like, you can't say nothing about it. You can't say nothing about it. And if, if, if you do say something about it, then either they want to cancel you, you get me, or they want to turn around and they want to call you some, some you've got some sort of um, phobia. Um, and it's not just a case of phobia, it was more a case of you're questioning what you're seeing. And, and, and why are you seeing what you're seeing? I mean, earlier on, I heard you talk about... Um, when is a woman a woman and when is a man a man kind of like thing um is it is it birth is it is it genetics is it biology um what is it and when you have that conversation and if you say well a man is a man and a woman is a woman then you're now seen as being homophobic and you're like well no not really i'm just trying to have a conversation and you know? do you know what on on that point i've got this great video it's about three minutes long as i said it's about this black woman explaining what it is to be female and mm. why some transgender people cannot be classified as mm. female or as a woman. It's a great argument. It's about three minutes long. I'll play it towards the end. For it's you to worth listen playing. To. I've seen it. it I've oh, seen okay. it. Okay, great stuff. And it's definitely worth playing. And I think people need to be educated a little bit more because there's a lot of stories about, you know, transgendered women should be considered women, but they're not. They don't have no. the components to be female. So then, I don't understand then... why they're classifying them and why they're dis declassifying the word female and woman. It's being stripped out as, and they're now saying people with breasts, you know, it people can't be with people. ovaries. I'm like, Everyone I'm like, have you... ovaries. Yeah, you, you, you can't be, you can't say that you, it, how can you say that you want to replace women? You can't replace women. Women are already there. They always have been there. Yeah. You know, um, you, you have your own, to me, you have your own area. And I, and I would be 100%, you're, oh, you're transgenders. Fine. Do you know what I mean? But you can't then say to me that you're, you're a male if you was a female. You're not. You can't say that. That's my opinion. By Genetically, the way. you're not. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, not. That's my opinion, by the way. Um, mm. You know, and, and then to say that you're 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 a male, but you're a woman. But yet for me and you are standing in the same cubicle. Yeah. And you're making me feel inferior because your appendage is longer than mine. How does that work? Mm. You see, the problem is what people don't realise is that your DNA and the genetics, your coding officially tells you what sex you are. So despite what you do on the outside, your, ten, your, your genetics, what's inside you, what's hereditary, is telling you that you're either male or female. Your, your DNA doesn't change strands just because no, your outer doesn't. body does. It so doesn't. internally, you still are. Your genetics is still working towards the fact that you are male or female. And I've done some study into this gene called the mt eve which okay. is where people are descendants from one you can trace your family back to one single female 
because right, it's females okay. that are the ones that can determine. Anyway, it's a long story. I haven't done right, enough research into it, it's, 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 so I don't want to talk about it just yet. Do, I'm still personally, researching. Personally, I do love these conversations um, because yeah. they, they're not had enough. I mean, people say, oh, you're a comedian, but yet for you like to talk about deep things. And I don't think they're deep. I think they're just conversations because you have conversations on different levels on, on, on different things and people specialise in, in certain areas, so to speak, you know. Um, but I, I do, because the whole thing is now is you are what you identify yourself to be, mm. yeah? And that's what you have to respect, yeah? So when I get on a bus, I identify as a two-year-old, therefore I shouldn't pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. If and we brought that argument true, out, yeah. could that really work? You know, could we... It, it, the process of self-identification is actually a little bit difficult because I, I saw someone talking about some 26 types of different identifications that you can put yourself through and it's just unbelievable. We're male or female, that's it. Or yeah. intersex, you've got both. I mean, you, that, you there's know, you, three. <laughs> yeah, but the thing about it is if you look at the... Let's say, let's take the world, wide world. Let's look at the animal kingdom. You got mm -hmm. a cat. Let's take a, the, the, let's say lions for instance. You've got a male lion or a lion that inserts themselves into the female lion and brings out the babies. Now, genetically, that lion, no matter what you want to do with it, cannot be a female, and genetically, the female cannot be. It happens in the, um, the aqua world with uh, sharks, with whales. Certain before animals. you before, before you carry on, there are some animals that can change I was, sex. I was I was about to yeah. say that. I was about you know to that from was, Jurassic Park, yeah. right? <laughs> I was about to say, there are some oh! animals. Right? I was about to say there are some animals like Rudy Liquid that can change sex from woman to man to man to woman. Yeah, right? I'm a chameleon. Right. I'm a chameleon, agree, mate. I'm not a comedian. That, right? I'm a chameleon. <laughs> but <laughs> but no, in all seriousness. I know that there are some animals that can have both sex, yeah? And I know there are some humans that are born with both genetics, right? But there's either, it's, there's only two. There's one or the other. So now you can identify whatever you want to identify yourself as and say that we have to call you whatever you want. But genetically, you cannot change what you have born to be. Well, I think what we I think what we do understand through common sense is that yes, there are there, when fertilization takes place, sometimes things go wrong, yeah. But it's not it's not the norm. It's not the norm. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Mm. It means that it's not the norm. It's not the norm. Um, yeah. So so to so to say it doesn't happen, I think would be wrong, yeah. But to then want to classify a male as a female, I personally personally really liquid. Um, have 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 an issue and need to have the, uh, a conversation about that to, to 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 get to the root of it. And it doesn't mean that I'm discriminating against those individuals. It means that I'm just questioning what has happened to nature. To nature. Can I just stop you there? Um, um, HBQ, can you read out Lady B and Lady Matrix um, comments um, in the chat there? Yeah, Lady B and said I saw an article about. I saw an article. Well, Delight says pregnant pe people. I mean, what what the F? I understand. Yeah, I, I don't like it as well. The NHS has changed all their document documentation to exclude the word woman. Lady B says, I saw an article about a scientist genetically modifying male rats that were able to get pregnant. They held it as a possible win for male se same sex couples. You know that's coming in. That's what they're trying yeah. to do. They're trying yeah, to they're ensure well. that it's just not one sex that can produce children. And they have been doing studies for a long time on males and trying to do this because you know there are some people that, you know, some of the, the, the uh, male uh, gay celebrities a lot of the gay people have a lot of money so they will pay right. for this yeah. and if there's a demand they will create the demand and it will be just become just but that, that's 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 what it is is once you once you can start to generate capital because capitalism is a horrible thing yeah and once money can be made from something you will create an industry right hence why they are allowing um children to make a decision in terms of changing their reproductive systems yeah, why money and um, development is going into this, why laws are being changed so this can happen. Because this is, like you said, this is money that's feeding, that's feeding this in truth. There's, it's, not, it's not about morals. It's not about principles. Um, it's, more, it's, more, it, it's more about if you've got the money to have, make things happen, then it can happen. You know, and that, and that doesn't... Power. Yeah, money, money, money dictates. Money, power. 
um, um, unfortunately. Um, so I think, I, I, like I said, um, I'm just, I'm not, I'm just not, I'm just not down with it. I'm sorry, I'm just not down with it. No, and the difficulty is, is that surgery is becoming so much more smarter that it, you're beginning to not know who was male or who was formerly female unless you can really see signs unless there's things like the voice or the mm. um the man's uh what do you call it again what's this thing oh called? the adam's, A- apple. adam's apple the adam's apple shown but now they shave those things off that's just normal as they part just, of surgery they, now but this yeah. is it Once again like you said it's it's all down to money but if we start going if we start digging a little deeper and we start to realize that um our, our, our caucasian cousins um dna is actually dying out um, and because it's it's dying out is when the research and everything started started to begin because now you're starting to talk about transferring wealth and legacy over to a people you may not want to have mm-hmm. um, or inherit you know um, I'm not I'm not trying to be careful because I don't want no one to get kicked off or anything like that you know you, you, just, you just don't you just don't want to pass your inheritance over to a culture that you don't agree with. Um, yeah, they want to keep it in within the culture, within the families, within. The family. Do you know what I mean? And and that's why, um, in a sense, <laughs> the royal family's German, right? They're not English, uh, <laughs> which is quite funny within itself, really. I know. And just saying about the royal family, I, I've had a few conversations about this Harry and Meghan, mm. and a lot of people are. Ter- I, I found that quite there's a number of black people that are turned off by Harry and Meghan, saying they shouldn't be doing what they're doing. And mm. I keep saying to people, but however, you've got to realise that the, the fundamental part of all of this is that the royal family is racist and they've called them out on it. And right. the whole world is calling them back out on it, saying they shouldn't be doing that. Leave the royal family alone. They're the royal family. Don't touch them. But they are racist. And Harry and Meghan yeah. have called out on them. And now they're being vilified every single day. Every day since those two have been married, the press have gone after them or someone's gone after them or Piers Morgan has gone after them. Yeah, I'd love yeah, a conversation with Piers Morgan. Well, when Piers got off, he walked out. That was funny. <laughs> he, he, he fancied Megan, didn't he? He thought he was He fancied there. her and she dissed him, man. And she, she dissed, dissed him. him. Yeah, they were friends. Uh-huh. And then yeah, she, she she blanked him. So he, he didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, because she, she could see that he was going to turn into that woman that we saw earlier on. She could see that. And she didn't, she didn't... <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want. She didn't Piers want Morgan thought his luck was in, and as soon as uh, she 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 got she stopped co- taking his calls and everything, he turned against her. Oh, yeah. so I, mean, I, I don't I don't know how he's got to the upper echelons of society. I watch Piers Morgan a lot, and he's a bit of a bully when he talks. He's, he's not a great. A bully, he's not a but, great presenter. He's a bully, and he's got he's friends always, in high places. Bully. Yeah, he's, he's a bully. Always, he's always been a bully, but the thing is, is that. He 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 represents the um, higher echelons of of Britain today, and like as much as you might not want to hear it, oh, keep it keep it white, keep it British, blah blah blah. He rep- he represents all of that in a very subtle way, a very 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 subtle way, um, and, and and people will be um, in agreement with that. But the struggle that we have, I think, in in the UK is that um, of people of African origin. One would, one could say that this isn't our place to be. Do you know what I mean? It's like you're coming, you're coming into Rome, so behave like Romans. Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's that, it's that sort of thing. But because of the years that have gone by, we've arrived since 1958, i.e., on the Windrush. Even though we, we know that we was here before that, because of the Cheddar Man with the black blue eye, with the blue eyes, etc. Yes. So you know, we've been here. We've yeah. been here donkeys. We've been here donkeys. I mean, you've got people. When people talk about the Black Watch and the Black Watch are meant to be Scottish soldiers, but in actual fact. They were um, soldiers that belonged to Septimus Sevius when he used to govern Britain, right, um, from way back. Well, I mean, I'm talking about, uh, what, 2,000 years ago, yeah? So, you know, once you start doing your history, you start to learn about what Britain, what British really is. But um, the reason why I've come to, on, your, on, your, on your show today, really, is because of the transitions that I'm, I'm, I'm making within the world of comedy um, and, and, and my role in it, Um because, um, I mean, I was one of the early pioneers of um, Black British comedy, and I've helped to um, stimulate its growth um, with the introduction of what is known as, as, as the comedy school, because the comedy school was a ladder and a way in which to get into the industry, um, which was basically a, a course that we developed in um, 90, ni- 1993. Yeah. And the whole purpose was was to show people how to do stand up comedy and how to develop and grow it. 
grow the industry as a whole. And I did that alongside a guy by the name of Keith Palmer. Um, Keith Palmer has now gone on to become an MBE um, for the works that we did because we used to go into prisons, we used to go into art centers, and um, we used to teach people comedy. Um, but from a black British perspective, because when I first started and I tried to do courses and I tried to talk about what it was to be black British, I was encouraged to talk about mushy peas as opposed to rice and peas because they were saying that Britain wouldn't understand what I'm Quick question for you. How do you, how do you teach comedy? Could I come to one of your classes and learn to be funny? What you can do is you can learn the technique of what it takes to be funny because you're quite a humorous person anyway and you've got a, you've got a broad personality, yeah? But um, what, the, what, the, what the school teaches you is to understand what you are doing, why you are doing, when you are doing it. So, for example, if, you was, if, if we start talking about what it is to be old and young, yeah, that, that means we start, we're, 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 we're dealing with comparisons. We're talking about a comparison, yeah, between the difference between being old and being young. So as a, as a, as a, as a child growing up, yeah, you most probably had no toys. So when your mom sent you to your room, right, you used to complain because there was nothing there, yeah? You send the picnic them to their room now, yeah? That's not a punishment. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah? It's not a punishment, but that's Most that's of them are in their rooms anyway. You see what I mean? But that's, that's humour. That is that is actually humour. But what I actually did was I did what is known as a comparison. Yeah? Yeah? So you can do that across the board on anything. Cats, dogs, do you get me? Living in a house, living in a flat. Do you get me? Having a big car, having a small car. You know, that's, that's, that's comparisons. And then you've got things like what is known as like list of three. So the list of three is when you, when you mention certain things, you get me? She had long hair, blue eyes, and a, and a, and a massive appendage. And you're like, what? What's he talking about? What's he talking about? What's he talking about? I was careful with the language there, right? Um, but that is like a list of three, yeah? Mm. So you, can, you, you sort of like show people techniques, yeah? They, ha they, they obviously have to have a story or they have to have a narrative about what they want to talk about, and then you layer it. Mm, you layer it with the jokes. With yeah. the joke, you get me. So you could be you could be talking about church, and you're you're talking about church, and you know what I mean when church used to mean something. You know what I mean because everybody used to go to church on a Sunday. Do you get me? But people are hardly going to church anymore. Yeah, because church it's like it, it's no, we like, were we were made to go to church yeah, we on were Sunday. Made to, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Right. Up until a certain age, actually... you were made to, and then you had a choice it's after that. Uh, but for the first go. 10 Once years... I was again, never forced to go to church. I actually went because... by myself. Sorry, sorry, Saki? I, I said I actually wasn't uh, forced. My mother didn't force me. She used to take me to church, but um, at a younger age, I actually started to go to different churches myself. Um, I visited various churches, and at one point, I was going to two churches on a Sunday of my own choice. Seriously, what was that? So you can get two different sets of, of, of collection money. So you can get <laughs> I went to a Pentecostal church and I used to go to a Church of England as well. And I was yeah, but then we see, we can do, we, 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 well. we can even do comparisons on those. Do you know yeah. what I mean? When the, when, when the, when the choir sings in a, in a, in a white church or uh, an Anglican Ooh. church, it's like, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> all frightened. Do you get me? Whereas when and they sing in the Pentecostal church, church, man, it was like a rave, man. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> dumb, and they hold on to the one <laughs> word for so long. They said, Jesus. That's <laughs> so Jesus. true. Hallelujah. hallelujah. No, hallelujah. hallelujah. I remember hallelujah. I was listening to a sermon. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. I was like, hall That's where the time is times. That's why the time used to run. That's why I used to spend half that time in that church. Because Forget the sermon. Just say hallelujah for half hour. Yeah. Kill off some yeah. time. <laughs> what, we see, what we just now created there, we, we created a premise for comedy. We created an area that everybody could relate to. And then yeah, we start pointing to. out. Sorry, sir. Question. I have a question for you about comedians. Um, um, and I think that you're a good person to ask this. Why is it that every comedian, when they do their um, shows, have to swear? Why is it? What is it about swearing? Why? No, I think I you've mean, just made a big generalization there, my friend. Because hold, on, I was, hold on, hold on. I was, I was about to change that because I realized that I was going to say the com most of the comedians that I've heard, yeah, I'm yet to hear a comedian that doesn't use the F word um, in their script. Now, maybe there are comedians out there that don't, but I've there not are, come because across because it stands out. I think it stands out for you 
personally because comedy is a very personal thing it's not no yeah. there is no one way to do anything and yeah. um every every individual expresses themselves in their in their own way now i don't think that you can say to me honestly that you would go to a barber shop or you would walk out on street and no nobody has used any foul language whatsoever it's very common um to hear um it's not it, so so it's, it's 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 about preference so there are comedians who, who are out there who don't swear there are comedians out there who do swear i i don't mind swearing i love swearing for me it's a beautiful thing to do especially if you are not using it just for the point of you it's like, you sometimes name, me some, it comes... name me three comedians or two comedians that you know that don't use the f word in their scripts i'm uh, just i'm just asking because I'm, I'm answering who? Cedric the Entertainer. Okay, I've not heard of. That might that um, might have to be Roger, some that Roger Griffiths. Roger yeah. Griffiths is a comedian over here. Right, he's a he's, he's he's a comic who's been working the circuit for now maybe about seven or eight years now. Yeah, I've not heard yeah. of Yeah. Um Hero yeah. and Duro. That's these are three comics. And there are more. Okay. That, that's good. And, and, and some of these comments I'd like to come across. It's just that um, what I should really say is that the ones that are out there, mainly at a lot of the, um, uh, a lot of the, the events that I do, because I do quite a lot of different types of events, um, okay. where, to be honest with you, sometimes swearing and that is not welcomed. But mm -hmm. I find that most of the comic com comedians that I use, and it's, it's a bit like um, I find the comedy circuit a little bit like a lot of the rays where a lot of the events use the same DJs. A lot of the events use the same comics over and over and over and over. So these Which ones that you are talking about, why. hold Which on, I'm just saying, yeah, I'm just saying these ones that you're talking about, I'd like to, I'd like to, to see them, you know, um, but, that's all I'm I saying. Think, but I'm, I think that's, I think that's down to your own research, Sharky, because mm. I think if you want to, if you want to find comedians, they're out there. You have to yeah. look for them. What's um, on the circuit is, is the most popular uh, comedians out there. And that's what people want to hear. But if you personally want to hear something different, you're going to have to go out there and do some research and find these comedians. So sometimes you can find them in the, in the open mic nights and things like that. Not all mm. of them swear. I've come across yeah. some that haven't sworn. But you need uh, to come away from some of the mainstream what, maybe and dig deeper. What I think it is is that I don't really follow comedy as much as some other people. It's not like I'm a person who run out and listen to um to listen to comedy okay i do like comedy but i'm not one of those comedians like yeah i have to go to this one i have to go to that one and most of the events that i'm involved in I'm, I'm i'm normally in the background quite on quite a lot of events like for instance uh, carry on comedy but what i do find is that uh and you know you've answered the question for me that a, a, a lot of the comedians that i've actually come across i should say swear even whether i'm listening to them on youtube whether i'm using them out in the circuit and i'm not saying that they are comedians that 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 don't but you know you've answered my question for me yeah so because what i'm trying to explain is the reason why you see those comedians over and over again is because the promoters through feedback have identified that these comedians are the comedians that people have a preference to see so those are the people who are putting the bums on the seats Right. Um, it's like if, if, if times change and there's a there's a sway, then the, the promoters or the facilitators would then gravitate to those people who are who have, who have a bigger draw. But at this point, at this point in at this point in time, um, the comedians who, who who are being regularly booked, as you put it, is because there seems to be a demand for mm. the type of comedy that they're putting forward. And that's why I say that. Um, you're you're a minority amongst the majority, um, and that's 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 how everything is really and truly. It's the same as on the DJ circuit, right? You said the same thing. You see the same DJs on the bill. The demand has been created for those DJs because they are popular, and that's what people want to hear. Mm. You know, it's not necessarily what my taste is. I don't want to see the same DJs at every single rave. Otherwise, I'm paying for the same rave over and over again, hearing the same thing. <laughs> and I suppose that could be the same applied on the comedy circuit. I'm not on to. I'm not on the comedy on the black comedy circuit at the moment, but um. 
But it's the same, right? It's it's about demand. So if the demand says they want Rudy Liquid at the next five shows, that's what it is. Mm. You know, otherwise he wouldn't be who he was, or the comedians wouldn't be who they were mm. if the demand wasn't there. Look at the chat room. Lovely Lee says uh, a comedian who doesn't swear is like a priest who don't pray. <laughs> so hey! Ooh, that's Shots a fired. good one. Shots we like fired. that. Ch- 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 Boom, 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 it's boom, so boom, true. Boom, 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 I mean, the, 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 the swear word emphasizes so much, and sometimes it just gives that bit of character to a story. I'm not necessarily saying it's the best yeah, thing to do, but you know what I mean? I, like, I swear. It's, it's not yeah, a good it's like thing. It's not you, ladylike. No, but it's, it's like when you stump your toe. Do you get me? You stump your toe, and you. You, you, you don't, don't say, oh, fiddlesticks. Oh, fiddlesticks. You don't. You don't. And. and what what you're trying to do as a comedian is you're trying to recreate a situation or a scenario or a feeling or a thought that you had. And nine out of ten times, the, fr- the frustration or the response that you've had to what you've spoken about, um, the, the, the ideal word for it may, may be a foul word, but it's in context. Everything has to be taken in context. I mean, that was the problem that... Um, that Eddie Murphy had with um, Richard with um, Bill Cosby, yeah, because Bill Cosby was talking about it should be clean, it should be that, it should be this, and uh, Eddie Murphy and um, Richard Pryor were like, well, no, um, because Bill Cosby made a conscious decision that he was going to go down the route he was going to go down because he wanted to appeal to to, to um, the whole of America or Middle America. Whereas you've got certain people who, who just want to appeal to the people who identify with them and they will find their own audience. It's like you find your own audience. Like when I listen to you play music, Sharky, I listen to you and I'm like, boy, this is an eclectic set of uh, a selection that you've picked out. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm. It's not the same as what I might hear another DJ play. Yeah. Do you get me? And so you start to build a particular type of audience that gravitates towards the type of music that you play. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Or the, st- the style in which you deliver it, yeah. Yeah, and I, and I find that's the, that's, the, that's the same thing, in a sense, um, with the comedy. But what, we've, what, we've, what I tried to do with the whole point of the comedy school was to, um, was to introduce people to different cultures, black cultures, into the, into the world of comedy. I mean, one of the reasons why we've got so many Africans on the um, the comedy circuit today is through the comedy school, because the comedy school introduced everybody to Kojo. They introduced everybody to Latif. Yeah. Um, the comedy school um, brought us Glenda Jackson. The comedy school brought us Mr. C. The comedy school brought us Kane Brown. The comedy school brought us Judy Love. The comedy school brought us Axel, who won Britain's Got Talent. I love yeah? Judy Love. I think she's just such a natural bunch, bungle of talent. I love that girl. She is. So, so, so the whole purpose of the comedy school was a way of helping us to develop um, our 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 industry. Basically, is is developing our industry. Um, But then I needed to take it a a step further. So I stepped out of the comedy school, and then I started to traverse the world doing the comedy that I do. So I went to China, I went to Japan, I went. Did all the cruises. Stop show and, off now. Stop show off. Stop show off. No, 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 in no. it, in it. Just <laughs> making us all jealous. I do, I, I, I do. No, 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 no. Well done to you. Well done. Well done. What I'm trying to do is, is to show that um, based on, on this knowledge and experience that I've had, the one thing that we don't genuinely have is we don't have outlets of our own. Mm. Right? We go we go to Catford. We go to um, Hackney Empire. But that's always an event. Yeah. It's Mother's Day. It's Boxing Day. It's it's an event, yeah. yeah. But we don't have what what is what is known on the white circuit, which is just clubs. Yeah. I mean, where where on a Tuesday night would you say that you're going to go and just go to a comedy club that you know there's a regular comedy club going on? Where are you yeah. going to go? Yes, true. True. So true so, what I, so 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 what I, what I've been trying to do is build up smaller little comedy clubs in and around London that people could start to frequent. Yeah. So, like in Penge, I've got the post comedy hour that happens once a month in Penge. You know, I know Penge. Yeah, so people can get a Caribbean buffet. I introduce them to new comics on the circuit. I also, I also um, uh, introduce them to the the regular comedians on the circuit. But they get a chance to see the comedians develop routines. 
they get a chance to see how the comedians grow. Are these these um? Let's have a look. These flies that I've got for you. Right, that's the, the post. Comedy out. That's the post. Uh, that's the post. That's the post. Okay. So that's the one that's coming up this uh this month. Where you okay. see, I've got Ravi Vicar, for example, who is who is a vicar. I've got Sean there. Sean is flying over from Ireland. He's flying. Wow. Wow. Flying over from Ireland because we didn't know that we had a an, a, a black Irish co comic. Brilliant. Where we Excellent. have a black Excellent. Irish comic. Do you know what I mean? I'm black and I'm Irish. Is there a problem here, Paul? Is there a problem? That's what I like saying to the police when they call me. <laughs> I'm black and I'm Irish. Is there a problem here, Paul? Oh, sorry, is there a problem? <laughs> so okay. So Love do you want to? Do you, do you, okay, we'll let you do a plug for this show because uh, it's coming up to the end of the show at 10 o'clock and oh. we're going to just wrap this up. It's okay, been absolutely so, so, so the, post, the post comedy hour is something that I do once a month, okay? Um, and like I said, they, they're, they're the comedians on the back of that flyer are not as well known as um, some of the comedians on the circuit. So you've got Edwin Jr. To me, that young gentleman there is going to become another Axel or possibly even a possible Richard Blackwood. Um, that I've seen that young gentleman there, Edward Jr. But people don't know of him, do you get me? And it, like, he's, he's a young comic who's coming through. I've got another show that, I, that I'm, I'm about to launch this Thursday um, in Brent. And it's, it's, called, um, it's called The Comedy Club, Rants and Bants. Yeah. And um, on that, I've got like, I've got Junior, Junior Booker, who people know. I've got um, Roman Harris. I've got Brandon Palmer, who's an American. I've got Icy Jones and I've got Big Rich. These are comedians who have been working the circuit, but they don't have that hype. You know that profile that you mentioned not too yeah. long ago, um, Starkey, where you're saying you're not really Starkey, seeing Starkey, Starkey, mate, get Starkey. it right. Starkey. All right, <laughs> all right. All right, Nick. All right, Nick back, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, that, um, that you don't really get a chance to see because of the demand for some of our more higher profile comedians. So I'm trying to give these people room. So um, this Thursday, I'm launching a new club called um, the Comedy Club Rants and Bants. It's going to be held in Brent. Uh, tickets are on Eventbrite. I should actually get it on GY, on you guys. I, I can't believe it. you. It's your, not, you your, said you're a supporter of black people. Tickets. You should not be yeah. supporting your Eventbrite. You know what? You know what? Okay. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to tell Martin. Yeah, yeah we're going to tell Martin. As, <laughs> much, as, as a matter of fact, you know, for that, I think we're going to kick him out, man. Just remove him. Because <laughs> it, it was me. I gave him that term cobbler, you know. He never used to call himself a cobbler, yeah. Um, and that was when we used to do Oh, the, he's the on, he's on. Martin said you, you spoke yesterday. <laughs> yeah, ask him. Ask him, the cobbler. That's what we call him. We call cobbler, yeah. But, um... Yeah, I should. I will. I will. I will start to put put it onto the um on, onto the get your tickets because I think it's an important place to be. It's just that I was so focused on trying to get Brent to to to, to hear and know about the new launch of the, the 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 comedy club that it really did slip my mind that um you know one of the highest profile ticket outlets is you guys. You know what yeah. I mean. So yeah. um, it's something that I'm gonna. It's something that I'm definitely gonna um, rectify. But um, I'm hoping that people will come out to the launch on Thursday night. Um, it's, it's at 385 High, High Road, Wilsdon. Um, it's called the Comedy Club Rants and Bants. Um, people can get their tickets on Eventbrite. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're coming on GY Radio Brian. and saying Come on GY Radio right. and promote right. Eventbrite, you know. Every, right, everybody put a, everyone put like a, one of those slap hands in the yeah, chat room yeah, for yeah, Rudy Liquid. But it's put one of those GY slap radio, hands on. Put an event bright. No, you, wait, wait a minute. Can we, can we, can we put, can, can we put I'll him on what. big screen when he says that? That he's, <laughs> that he's right promoting on event bright. By the way, everyone, this is Rudy Liquid. By the way, and uh, Rudy Liquid is promoting his show on GY Radio. And selling the tickets on Eventbrite. Just wanted yeah, to just yeah, put you oh, up there. He's on, yeah? he's on the ticket selling show <laughs> and he's promoting another <laughs> company. <laughs> in Fiesta, do I? In Fiesta. What? Listen, Tell guys. You. Listen, don't go to Rudy Liquid Show on Thursday. <laughs> Come here on Thursday to my club. Come to my salsa club, right? <laughs> Where I will welcome you all. And uh, yes. It's <laughs> don't be so wicked. No. No, no, no. Uh, Eventbrite, that's where the tickets are if you want to go to that comedy. Unfortunately, I can't come, um, Rudy, because um, I, I run a salsa club on a Thursday night, as you can see here. And I'm He's the DJ plugging away, Thursday, isn't he? So. 
Well, I'll just let you really know. Anyway, to be honest with you, Sharky, because the type of comics that I have, yeah, talk about the world as it is and not as <laughs> people would want it to be. You know what I mean? um, but you know, I'm invited, right, Rudy? You know, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody with an open mind as opposed to a closed mind <laughs> I, are invited to come along. Uh, uh, and, listen, uh, my mind oh, is, thank o- you. O- is open. It's quite, it's quite closed, actually. It really is. <laughs> the type of questions that you ask are quite closed. Rudy. T- um, take take that hat off and your mind will be open too. Why should I take the hat off? Why are you bullying me? Why are you bullying me? <laughs> I'm just you saying, if you, you take, like if you take the hat off, off, the brain will like be open, innit? Now, 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 gentlemen, now, now. <laughs> it's jokes. <laughs> now, now, gentlemen, this is a breakfast show, but Thank no, seriously, seriously, Rudy, thank you so much for coming on stuff. I thoroughly enjoyed our yeah, time. It's supposed to be an brilliant. hour. But uh, we've oh. been chatting away. I could take you all the way up until 10 o'clock. That sounds so wrong, doesn't it? But, yes, uh... <laughs> Nelly made me spit out my drink there. It does sound wrong. And they that call sounded, me Rudy. You know, they that sounded so... I could take you all the way to 10 o'clock. Everyone knows what I mean, right? In terms of the <laughs> show, people. In terms of the show. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much, Mr. Thank Nick. Much. I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to come to the Penge one. I'm coming... I'm going to come back to Croydon at some point. I definitely want to want to come to that. What day? What day is the Penge one? one? It's on a Thursday. Penge it's on a Thursday as well. The Penge is on a Tuesday. A Tuesday. Oh, yeah, I can make that. on a Tuesday and the Ransom Mance is on a Thursday. Oh, um, no, we can do the, the, I can do the Tuesday. The, yeah, one is at the first um, Tuesday of the month, mm-hmm. which, is the, um, which is the Penge. And do the other one... A, do you have the flyer for the Ransom Bants one? Maybe we can put that up. I do. I'll WhatsApp Ping that across to me. Yeah, yeah. I'll ping it to me. We put it we'll up once it he gets get your, tickets, the, your tickets logo on it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, no, <laughs> I, I think, I'm hoping by, within the next few days, I will send everything across to Martin so that he's got them. Because I, I've also got shows in, in Staines, put shows on in Staines at the tennis, um, tennis club. And I've also Excellent. got another one in Bushy, um, and that's where I'm, I've, I've literally got a mixed audience. When you when are you coming up to the West Midlands, Rudy? Are, are you excluding the West Midlands? I don't hear no Manchester, no Birmingham, no Wolverhampton. When when are you coming to the West Midlands? When are you coming? I mean, that, uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, I, I, it's a gradual process for me because um, it all has to work out economically as well, you know. Um, and of if course. you had if you have enough comedians, for example, in um, Wolverhampton that could support that, then yes, but because that's why I'm saying that what normally has to happen for us to go to Wolverhampton, it has to be an event, it has to be a, a big occasion, um, so as that you can justify your your outgoings uh, with what is coming in. Because these are small little venues that we're talking about, sixty or seventy mm-hmm. people. Do you know what I mean? Which is really not a lot of people when you think about it, and it's because of the love that I've got for comedy is why I'm prepared to put in that kind of effort um, for little monetary return. But when you look at it over a a year or when you look at it from a broader perspective, you know, these small acorns grow into big trees. You know what, I'm saying that, um, I just know we're coming to the end of the show. Um, I I play a monthly sometimes with Adelaide McKenzie when I get a chance and her singing and she brings on new artists and she had her birthday um, not too long ago. And it was, a, like you said, a small event, fantastic singers. It was almost like a concert, brilliant. Yes. So sometimes yes. those small, cl- up close and personal um, events like that can be the in thing. It's it can be the link. You can it's get a really good night out of it. And we had a fantastic night. But And the thing is, is that um, we're of that generation now whereby we should be having these things because we're, we're rooted here. Yeah. If you follow what I mean, whereas our parents, it wasn't it wasn't the same thing. So they needed an event for them to go out. But we actually live here. We finish work. We need somewhere to go. Do you know what I mean? Um, the, the, the Caribbean restaurants are even starting to develop and create better environments for us to come and sit down and have something to they eat. Need to. To, mm. Yeah, they, but they but it, it needed it needed to get there because the, our counterparts are doing it. The Asians are doing it. The Turks are doing it. Yeah, you know, I still don't understand like, why they take that Jamaican or the West Indian theme and bring it across into good old London. You think, can we just not have a ramshackle type takeaway place? Could you just like put some energy into it and make it at least right. look nice, and then work on your customer service, and then we got of it course. all good. Of course, I mean, it was good. What's that the chain of restaurants, um, Caribbean restaurants um, that's not run by West Indian? Turtle oh, Bay. Oh, God. Bay. Now, to me, that idea, what they've got, a- excellent. I-, I love 
You can't say. going to turn the bay. I love that concept, but it's the wrong people running it. Of course it's wrong. You go into right. a Chinese restaurant and you see a white man standing up you there, don't. right, talking up, giving it. You're like, no. You're, 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 you're. You know, and it's you go in there, and it's got that nice feeling of the Caribbean. They've they've brought all you know things from the Caribbean, and they put this restaurant together, and they've got a chain of them, and it's it's nice, but the wrong people running it. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it doesn't. It, that's where it loses its authenticity. Yeah, um, and, and yeah, and. And I don't think nice in terms of decor. I don't know, but yeah. I wouldn't like judge yeah, the food I, I, on I, that. I, I, yeah. I, because I'm, I'm part. I'm beyond saying that we don't have the business acumen to run mm. these things. I'm, we I'm, do, I'm and as obviously yeah. we do. As, we as do. HPQ Terman has said, you know, work on the customer service. That's something that you know the Caribbean restaurants. I feel a lot of them really need to work on their customer service Make yeah I, I i hate being dealt Stop with making people wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. walk around with a long face because you know what i mean have a smile on their face you're taking it's, that it's, money you should be smiling it's not even that it's when they're talking to you and they're not even looking at you yeah, yeah. what yeah. Do you want yeah 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 yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. one little <laughs> tiny piece of pittance of chicken and a whole heap of money and a little <laughs> tiny bit of rice what's rice but the thing is is that when they, if, they, if they were working for another if they were working for somebody else or a different culture, they don't have that mentality. They don't, for some reason, it's like when it's our own, we just feel that, um, or maybe because it's family run. A lot of these um, smaller outlets or food outlets tend to be family run and therefore they don't have the same business business ethics that, uh, and they, uh, that are necessary. They've also got a part to play in our general health, all right? Caribbean food is not always that healthy. When you serve everything mm. with rice or potatoes, it is not healthy. And every time I walk into a Caribbean shop, do you have anything else other than rice? No. Mm. <laughs> right? Or yeah. pasta. It's something yeah. carby or heavy. You don't do no vegetables, no salad. All the vegetables is stir fried in some oil. It's like give some options. Otherwise, someone's going to come and take this business away from you. All right. We like traditional Caribbean food, but we need but it needs to evolve. But that's what's happening. That's why we have the turtle bays because we haven't sussed that. Um, that's why we have high diabetes within yeah. the community. Yeah. That's why we have. High, I think we have high blood pressure because we're always constantly stressed. To be honest with you, um, yeah, I, that too. You know, <laughs> but, um, I think, like you said, in terms in terms of the food and in terms of the diet, you know, we could we could trace that back to why we eat shrubs. Um, you know, because that's what massa left us to to eat do you know yeah. what i mean why we like oxtail why we like cow foot why we like chicken the, foot chicken foot and all, when i saw chicken foot in the fridge my my brother's wife yeah with the claws yeah and uh, i remember they were staying here one time and i opened up the fridge and i saw this team looking at me like that and i thought what are they wrong what is he doing at this fridge what is he doing it was chicken foot man and i was like no 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 you let me cut off the tone there <laughs> yeah, with, with uh, the, when it's got the toenails on, it's it's quite horrendous when you first see it. But listen, uh, Rudy, we we could yeah, we, we could talk we all up. day with you, and oh, I need okay. to let Sharky play some music and wrap up before we go. And we need to bring you back again. This has been so yeah, interesting. We talked about comedy would, a little bit, but I would love to do a um, a, a, a comedy rap roundup for you guys once a month. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, where I come in and I can tell you what's going on with the, in in the comedy world, who's doing what. Oh yeah, let's do that. that, that let's that, do we're, that. Yeah, we're, we're um, down for that definitely. I would love to, to to introduce that as a, as a segment at some point. Um, I know we could talk about that off air. Um, yeah, but sitting here just just vibing with you guys and um, do you know what I mean? I I actually like the triangular situation where we have difference of opinion and someone's got to shut somebody up and <laughs> <laughs> because we can't all. Always. We do argue. We we do argue sometimes. I mean, we we've definitely. argued on here where we I don't mean, see yeah, the same yeah. point. I think yeah, this is yeah. the this, this is the thing that people have to understand that it doesn't always have to reach to a point where um Will Smith turns around and deals with Chris Rock the way that he did. I thought Chris Rock would have made some <laughs> more way. money. Chris Rock should have fight him, yeah, and then drop on the thing and go, oh, 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 and then drop the insurance money and then still. Would you, what, what, what was it? Whiplash. Go for yeah, whiplash. Yeah, Maybe you could always for claim for whiplash. whiplash. Get 40 million out of him for that, and then get the 40 million from Netflix as well. I think he missed the trick. <laughs> Do you know, is Sharky doing that on purpose? Is that what they do in the Oscars? They start playing the music to get yeah, people to stop yeah. talking. So yeah. <laughs> I think that's what he's doing, Rudy. But listen, my darling, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. 
But before you go, everybody, I'm going to let you stay on for this last bit of news because I'm going off as well and leave Sharky to run the last bit of show. Whatever you do, ladies. Now, I spoke about plastic surgery earlier What's on that, and Daisy? things that you can do to do to yourself. Right. This is when you take steps, take things one step too far. And this is when people are trying to emulate black people too much because this lady has spent eight thousand oh. pounds on surgery. Oh. Eight thousand pounds in surgery. Her fans are begging her not to get any more fillers in her lips. Now, what oh, no. I don't understand is that people like that go on OnlyFans and make a whole load of money. I'd need to understand what men like that. What do those lips do? Hmm? What do they do? <laughs> like, no. Whatever the case is, this is HP. It's it's like it's like it out. Like a chicken there. <laughs> <laughs> those, those lips are for fucking out the chicken foot. That was that's what those lips are for, man. I don't know, you know. I, I got no words for that. You know Somebody likes them for something. I could have saved their money and just bring my baseball bat, and that would have helped her out. She wouldn't have to spend that time. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is HPQ. Oh, I'm brilliant. out of here. Rudy, it's been brilliant. We're going to talk offline about bringing okay. up this comedy hour yeah. once a month. Thank yeah. you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank no you very much, Rudy. Thanks for having me, Sharky, Starky. <laughs> you stay there. Listen, you know what I've got to say to you? <laughs> that was so funny. Listen, oh. this has been the funniest show. I'm so late for work. It's unbelievable. I should have started way from nine o'clock and I'm on the news chatting away to Rudy. He was a fantastic <laughs> guest today. That was totally unscripted, by the way, everybody. That was just Absolutely. us just chatting away there with Rudy and we're going to try and do that once a month but I'm going to let Sharky round up the show I'm off thank you very much this has been HPQ News see you guys next week